Mark Gibson Humanoids channel. The content to this animation CPA, MBA, CMA, ACPA, ASA, Australia. Enjoy learning! We'll go now to business combination via stock acquisition naman. Pag-usapan natin yung stock acquisition pero para mas ma appreciate mo yung concept let's compare it no uh, with merger so sabi natin kanina merger yung ginawa natin kanina uh, the acquirer gets 100% of the assets and liabilities of the acquiring now in stock acquisition the acquirer gets more than 50% of the outstanding voting shares kaya class <clears throat> ang emphasis dyan is more than 50% kasi nga it indicates control. Kung mahilig ka manood ng mga Filipino teleserye, parang from time to time meron dyan lagi nag-aaway sa board tapos uh, ina-outvote yung uh, isang member of the board or chairman of the, of the board of directors via votes, no? So, dyan yung nililigawan yung other shareholders. So, here, in order for IFRS 3 to be applicable, the acquirer has to have control. Kaya nga nilagay dyan, more than 50% of the outstanding voting shares. Kasi nga, uh, kahit naman sa simple, sa binata sa classroom, no? pag votohan, majority wins. No? Sa simple election, majority wins. So, in order, again, in order for IFRS 3 to be applicable, the acquirer has to have the control. No? So, that's that's why more than 50% indicates a control. Ano pa bang say ng 49? Ano pa bang say ng 20%? No? If, you, if you have more than 50%, no? so sila, ayan na lang. Uh, <clears throat> parang sa mas madaling sabi, saling po sana lang. No? All the decisions will be handled by yourself or by the acquirer being the uh, holder of more than 50% of the outstanding shares. Diretso tayo agad sa discussion problems because uh, in in stock acquisition, it's it follows the same concept in business uh, acquisition uh, acquisition via merger earlier. No? So sa lahat ng concept na dinisiyas natin kanina, yun pa rin, same exact principle will apply. Ano lang yung kaibahan? Yun yung makikita natin when we illustrate it using problems. No? Now, here, I prepared four requirements, pero four independent requirements yan. So meaning, we have to take one uh, exclusive no, of the other. No? So let's have uh, requirement number one first. Assuming that HDHC paid 1.3 million cash to acquire the shares, that fair value of non-controlling interest is 400,000 and that the full goodwill method was opted for, how much is the consolidated assets on the date of acquisition? <clears throat> Sige, puntaan natin yan. Uh, problem 4. <clears throat> Tandaan class, um, in business combination via stock acquisition, we are not purchasing the net assets of the acquiry. Sino yung mga kausap natin? Ang kausap natin dyan are the shareholders of the acquiry. No? So for example, meron tayong shareholders na si Napiolo, si Ruru, si Dennis, and si Alden. So they own 100% and now we are we are buying 75%. 75% no? <clears throat> from 75% from these shareholders. No? So in effect, pagiging owner tayo nitong subsidiary, and that's why we it's 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 uh, relevant to simply call it as parent and subsidiary. Kasi nga, 
i-outbuy natin, bibili natin yung shares si Napiolo, Ruru, and Dennis. So, sabihin natin pang tatlo. Ang may iwan na lang is si Alden. Accounting for 25% of shares. No? Siya yung magiging non-controlling interest. Of course, in this type of problem, ang kailangan ulit natin gawin is we compare the aggregate of these three versus the fair value of the net assets of subsidiary. So in this case, it's WWL. Let me read the problem first. No? On July 26, 2021, <clears throat> Heidelin Diaz Holdings Corporation, HDHC, acquired 75% of the outstanding voting shares of WWL Corporation gaining control over the acquiry in the process. So, important yun, no? On this day, immediately before the business combination, the separate books of HDHC and WWL Corporation had the following data. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we have um, this, no? On the date of acquisition, the receivable of HDHC and WWL are both overstated by 500,000 and 100,000 respectively. The fair value of the PPE of HDHC is higher than its book value by 1 million, while the book value of PPE of WWL is higher than its fair value by 200,000. So ito na, pag-usapan muna natin ito. Ang sasabi natin, Ang daming mga data, even HDHC's fair value for receivable and PPE are provided. Pero tandaan, hindi natin siya kailangan. Kasi nga, uh, ang kailangan lang natin i-restate to its fair value would be the net assets of WWL. <clears throat> Sige. How much is the consideration? No? So sabi natin, it should be the aggregate of all of these three. No? So we have considerations, non-controlling interests, and the previously held shares. No? But in this case, ang meron lang tayo is the 1.3 million pesos um, payment. No? Based on requirement number one. Sabi dyan, assuming that HDHC paid 1.3 million cash to acquire the shares. No? So yan. Pag-usapan ngayon natin yung fair value of net assets of subsidiary. So, fair value of net assets of the subsidiary, we have the book value of 1,700,000. Uh, book value of net assets, no? simply, kunin mo na lang yung ordinary shares, share premium, and retained earnings. Ganun din naman yun. No? And then, plus minus the adjustments. So, ano yung mga plus minus the adjustments ko dito? <clears throat> so, we have receivable. Sabi dyan, Receivable are overstated by 100,000 for WWL. So, kailangan ko siya ibawas. <coughs> Excuse me. And then PPE. Sabi sa PPE, PPE of WWL is higher than its fair value by 200,000. So, kung higher, so kailangan natin siyang bawasan. And then finally, sa goodwill. Pansin it mo, class, there is a goodwill recorded under WWL. And tandaan, ang kinukuha lang natin dito are identifiable assets and liabilities. Goodwill is unidentifiable. No? So we have also, we also need to deduct that. And remember, goodwill, fair value is always zero. So <clears throat> we have to deduct the entire amount. So with that, makuha na natin yung uh, total. No? So that's 1.3 million. <clears throat> How about the non-controlling interest? How are we going to measure that? So sabi natin, non-controlling interest can be measured at either fair value or proportionate share in the fair value of the net assets of the subsidiary. Pag sinabi natin fair value method, this is also called the full goodwill method. And then pag sinabi natin proportionate share, 
of course, this is the proportionate share method or partial goodwill method. Meron lang pa yung mga kailangan tandaan. Plus, if the problem is silent, we'll use full goodwill method provided if it's possible. Paano yun? No? Sa pag-uusapan natin later on, <clears throat> we have to test it. No? Kasi uh, in here, ito, same lang pa class. Ha? Ginawa ko lang siya uh, kasi dito kasi naka-horizontal, ginawa ko lang siya vertically. <clears throat> so, I mean, ginawa ko lang siya horizontally. So, we have aggregate. It's the same. So, controlling interest of 75%. So, that's 1.3 million. Now, ito yung pag-uusapan natin kanina. Fair value of the net assets. Ito siya, di ba? Total is 1.3 million. <clears throat> so, we have to split this between... Uh, the proportionate share, no? so 975,000, paano kuha yun? 1,300,000 multiplied by 75%, so that's 975,000. And then 325,000 representing 25%, so that's for the non-controlling. <clears throat> Hinahilay ko lang yung mga na-address na, na natin. No? So here, tignan natin ha, ang sabi kasi dyan, full goodwill method was opted. Sabi natin, pag full goodwill method, <clears throat> the uh, the goodwill is split between controlling interest and non-controlling interest. Pero, ang test dyan, dapat uh, hindi ito magne-negative. No? Kaya nga, yun yung, yun yung una dapat natin sinecheck if it's possible. No? So, paano yun? Uh, we have the aggregate. No? So, Magkano yung valuation natin dito? 400,000. That's given. So in this case, the fair value of the non-controlling interest is given. So sabi dyan, 400,000. So nilagay ko siya 400,000. Uh, but at the same time, chinag ko muna. Is it okay? Is it possible to use that? So 400,000 minus 325,000. 75,000 is positive. So meaning, it's permitted. Ulitin ko yun ha. <clears throat> If this result, no, if this resulted to negative gain yun, kung may gain dyan, ang sabi ng standards, uh, non-controlling interest cannot partake no, from the gain from business combination. So meaning, it's not permitted, it's not allowed by the standards, by IFRS 3. Now, if... <clears throat> Kung halimbawa nag-negative yan, ulitin natin plus, hindi siya allowed. No? So, paano yung mangyari? For example, this is 300,000. This is not allowed. So, therefore, the aggregate will have to be uh, measured at the fair value, proportionate share method. No? So, yun yung gagamitin natin. So, mamaya meron naman tayong ganyang illustration. But let's proceed with the <clears throat> data first. No? Okay, so tuloy natin tong problem number one. So meron na tayong ngayong uh, completed the template. No? So we have 300, this is goodwill. We have 325,000 pesos for the controlling interest. And again, no, pag full goodwill, meaning the goodwill will be shared, no? by controlling interest and non-controlling interest. Pag-usapan natin yung mga entries para at least mas maging familiar tayo. No? Sa book ni HDHC, of course, we have to record investment in subsidiary. Investment in subsidiary, debit and credit cash. This represent the consideration. No? So, magkano nga yung binayat? Ayun, 1.3 million cash. Now, we also have the so-called working paper entries. Kasi nga, tandaan mo class, meron ka dyan parent, meron, meron ka parent company, and then meron kang subsidiary. In order for you to get the consolidated financial statements, we, you have to uh, consider the working paper entries. Kasi class, hindi siya, 
beneficial than to ka straightforward no kasi remember uh, in business uh, combination via stock acquisition yung subsidiary will remain operational hindi naman siya magsasara kasi what we purchase we've transacted from the shareholders directly so ang binili natin pansin natin dito ulit sa example no hindi naman tayo bumili from each from WWL we've transacted directly to the shareholders no? so we transacted directly to Piolo, Ruru and Dennis and bought 75% so therefore the subsidiary will re still remain operational so meaning si subsidiary will have a book of its own as well as si parent no? but then we have to have a consolidated financial statement. Kasi nga naman, ang kailangan natin ma-establish dito ay eh, yung full picture. No? But it's not as straightforward as parent plus subsidiary is equals consolidated. No? So there are items that we have to consider. Kaya nga meron tayong tinatawag na working paper entries. No? So isa-isa natin to working paper entries. So debit uh, investment in subsidiary. So, paano muna, para saan muna tong uh, entry number one? So, entry number one is to adjust for the fair value. So, remember class, no? initially, meron tayo dito <coughs> receivable, PPE, and goodwill. Overstated. No? So, dahil overstated siya, we have to reduce them. So, we have received receivable 100,000 PPE 200,000 and of course goodwill. Ito ha, itong goodwill na to, this is the goodwill of WWL. Baka lang ma-confuse ka kasi tandaan, meron siyang goodwill dito initially at 100,000, okay? So how are we going to split this? Sabi natin, we have to split this based on the proportionate share. So, debit investment in subsidiary, 300,000. Paano na compute yun? 400,000 multiplied by 75%. No? So, kaya ang laki ang lagay ko dyan, proportional share. Next, non-controlling interest debit, 100,000 representing 25%. Okay? Of course, next item is to eliminate the shareholders' equity of the subsidiary. O baka ma-confuse ka na naman, bakit mo kailangan i-eliminate? Ini-eliminate lang natin, but later on, babalik din naman siya in the form of non-controlling interest. No? Sige, say send muna natin. Debit uh, ordinary shares, 1 million. Share premium, 200,000. Retained earnings of 500,000. Again, how are we going to split this? So, sabi natin, we have to split it by a proportionate share. So, 75% goes to the investment in subsidiary, ito yung sa parent. And then, sa non-controlling interest naman, representing 25%. No? So, that's to eliminate the stockholders' equity of the subsidiary. And then next, we have to record the goodwill. Itong goodwill, ito yung na-compute natin kanina here. No? <clears throat> Itong 400,000. So how are we going to record that debit goodwill? 400,000. Credit, ito na. Be careful kasi dito plus, since we have calculated it earlier, we are using the calculation. No? So that's 325,000 for uh, investment in subsidiary account and 75,000 for the non-controlling interest. Ayun. Huh? Okay, so with that, ready na tayong computein yung requirement. No? So, ano pa nga pa requirement ang haba na ng ginagawa natin? <clears throat> so, the requirement is how much is the consolidated assets on the date of acquisition. So, consolidated, so we have to compute for the consolidated financial statement. <clears throat> of course, we have a table. So we have parent plus subsidiary plus minus the working paper entries. Ulitin natin class na, itong working paper entries, this won't be found in the parent or subsidiary's books. 
Kasi nga sabi natin, parent has its own standalone books as well as the subsidiary. But again, we have to come up with a consolidated FS. Kasi nga, imagine, sino bang owner ni subsidiary? It's the parent, no? amounting to 75%. Okay? Ang naiiwan lang naman kay subsidiary is the 25%. No? So in order for us to prepare a financial statement that is faithfully represented and relevant to the decision makers, eh, kailangan natin, we have to come up with a consolidated financial statement. So, paano yan? <clears throat> Sa parent, kunin lang natin lahat ng mga activities niya. So, we have uh, unahin ka itong receivable, 3 million, inventory, 4 million, PPE, 14 million, <clears throat> intangible, 2.5 million, and then the goodwill, 1 million. So, wag ka ulit paprito, this goodwill, this is uh, the goodwill from the parent uh, books. No? So, okay na tayo dyan. Highlight ko lang siya na green. Now, for the cash, meron tayong 10 million. But remember, we paid 1,300,000. So, ito na. Para na tayo nag account no? Para na tayong gumagawa ng tile balance. <clears throat> so, of course, we have to affect that. And of course, we have to include investment in subsidiary. This is an asset account, no? amounting to 1,300,000. Nilagyan ko siya, kinolor code ko rin siya para at least alam natin kung saan siya, saan siya kukunin. So, this entry. So, okay na tayo kay parent, punta tayo kay subsidiary. <clears throat> Again, plus, kay subsidiary, uh, we are, the subsidiary will still continue its operation. No? So, we have 500,000, 600,000 receivable, uh, inventory of 450,000, PPE is 1,200,000, 250,000 in the intangible asset, and then goodwill for 100,000. <clears> now, the next step is to include the working paper entries. No? So, ayan, color coded na rin siya. Unain natin tong uh, uh, adjustment for the fair value. No? So, sabi natin, meron dyan receivable. Minus, ayun, credit na. And then, uh, PPE, minus pa rin. So, tinapat ko lang dyan, minus. <clears throat> and then, goodwill, 100,000. But in this case, ito kasing goodwill dito, it's a combination. Combination of these two. No, meron kang goodwill doon for WWL. And at the same time, goodwill para dun sa in-establish natin, no? Uh, that's 400,000 minus 100,000. So, that's 300,000. Okay na tayo dyan. Puntaan na ngayon natin yung investment in subsidiary. Tandaan ang investment in subsidiary, uh, in the consolidated financial statement, this will be, will have to be zero. Kasi nga naman, imagine, no, nag-invest ka sa sarili mo. No? So, uh, while masarap pakinggan that you're investing in, your, in yourself. No, sasabi mo, you have to pamper yourself. Sa totoong buhay, okay yun. No? But in, in in accounting, in financial statements, eh, hindi siya, uh, it's not going to faithfully represent yourself no, to the decision makers. Kasi nga, parang nire-record mo yung investment mo sa sarili mo. No? It's, it's not good. <clears throat> so, therefore, we have to zero it out. Paano yun? So, all we have to do is take out take up all the entries. No? So we have debit of 300,000, credit of 1,275,000, and credit of 325,000. So, kunin ko So that's 1,300,000. So napansin mo, meron tayong 1,300,000 sa parent, less dun sa working paper entry natin na 1,300,000. So, at this stage, we have already uh, Included no, the working paper entries in this table. No? So we're now ready to compute for the consolidated FS. So all we have to do is get the sum of these three. So that's 9.2 cash, 3.5 for receivable, 4.4, 45 for inventory, PP is 15 million. 2,750,000 for intangible, and then 1.4 million for the goodwill. Oh, but sinimang rasa, dito sa goodwill, ang combination nito is 1,040,000 for 
parent, from the parent, and then 400,000, ito, yung in-establish natin based on the business combination. So, total consolidated assets would be 36,300,000 or the answer is letter C. Para lang mapatunayan na tama yung equation natin na asset is equal to liabilities plus equity, eh, kompletuhin na rin natin. So, consolidated F, uh, consolidated liabilities, of course, kunin lang natin lahat ng liabilities nino, ang parent. So, we have uh, 5 million plus 12 million plus 700,000, plus 700,000. So that's 18 million, 400,000. Next, ito na, kunin natin yung outstanding shares, share premium, and retained earnings. Pero pansinin mo, ang kinuwalang natin is yung sa parent. Bakit? Kasi remember, we have eliminated the stockholders' equity of the subsidiary already. So that's 6 million. <clears throat> 5.5 million and then 6 million. Again, uh, this represents the shareholders' equity of the parent. No? Dito na pupunta ngayon si subsidiary sa non-controlling interest. Paano natin nakuha yung 400,000? Well, this is this represents the uh, fair value no? of the controlling of the non-controlling interest representing 25%. This will, this will form part of the shareholders' equity of the consolidated. No? So, yun. 36,300,000. So, tama yung compute natin. Asset. No? So, that's requirement number one. Sabi natin, no, we have four requirements, pero independent siya, no? exclusive of, uh, of one another. So, let's have uh, requirement number two. Hindi na siya ganun ka, ka, <clears throat> kahabang discussion kasi uh, requirement number one, we have covered all of the concepts. Kung napansin yun, no? Kaya in requirement number two, hindi na natin siya uulitin, pero <clears throat> itetest natin ngayon yung uh, rules no, per uh, IFRS 3. So, same problem, pero ito na yung number two. Assuming that HDHC paid 1,025,000. This is the amount of consideration no? to acquire the shares inclusive of 125,000 control premium. <clears throat> so, anong ibig sabihin niyan? Uh, imagine, no? Uh, bumibili tayo kay... Uh, balikan natin itong example na ito. Ang fair value lang is 1,025,000. Pero dahil sa kagustuhan natin talaga ng mga kabili, ng shares ni Napiolo, Ruru, and Dennis, we are including premium, control premium of 125,000. So, ang fair value lang is 1,025,000 minus eh, 125. So, imagine, no? the fair value is 900,000 only. And yet, we are willing to pay extra para lang talaga ma-persuade natin sila to sell. So, parang ano yan? parang uh, YouTube premium. Uh, so, kung nakakanood ka naman sa YouTube, pero gusto mo walang ads, so you have to pay extra para din yung Spotify. Nakaka, nakakapakinig ka naman sa Spotify and yet gusto mo ng Spotify premium para at least walang ads, walang 30, walang, uh, you can uh, skip unlimited. No? So, that's also the same here. No? So, the fair value is only 900,000. And yet, itong si HDHC is willing to pay extra of 125,000 pesos. No? So, yun. So, with that, pag-usapan ngayon natin ulit ito. Ang sinasabi ba dyan, no? Full goodwill method was opted to use. No? Yan. So, sinasabi ng problem, gamitin daw si full goodwill. Pero kanina, diniscuss natin only if it is possible. <clears throat> Lagay ko ito dito. Ito na kasi yung pinaka-cheat sheet natin. Pinaka-guide natin. So, sabi natin, yes, okay. Non-controlling interest can be measured either fair value or, or proportionate. Ito pa nga si problem. Sabi niya, gamitin daw natin yung uh, 
full goodwill method. No? So, pag full goodwill method, ang, uh, pag full goodwill method, it's the fair value. So, magkano ba yung fair value nung uh, pinag-uusapan natin? It's not given. No? Not, uh, full, the fair value is not given. So, we have to calculate. No? So, 1,025,000 minus 125,000 that's the total fair value over 75 multiplied by 25% to get the 25%. So that's 300,000. 300, ito naman kasi, ito na yung nakompute natin kanina. No? So hindi natin ulitin to. Oops, bakit ang combination? Ano bang maganda sa pink? Sige, red. Let's go for it. Okay na tayo dyan. Uh, So, kung, gag kung susundin natin si problem, sabi dyan, gamitin daw sa full goodwill method, in effect, we'll have to use 300,000 as the fair value. So, we have to include 300,000 here. No? Pero pansinin mo, class, the result will be negative. Eh, sabi natin kanina, if it resulted in a gain or negative, non-controlling interest won't have a share in the gain. Pero, IFRS 3. So meaning, this is not allowed by the standards. So hindi siya pwede gamitin. So we have to, we need to use the proportionate share. So ito yung gagamitin natin sa red. No? Ulitin natin ha, class. While the problem states that we should use full goodwill method or the fair value method, we have tested it, tested it and it proved that it's not allowed by the standard. No? So, ang um, full goodwill, it's the fair value. It's equivalent to 300,000. We compare it to the fair value of the net assets. No? And nag-result siya sa so, negative. No? So, sabi ng standard, hindi yan pwede. So, in that case, we have to use the proportionate share method. No? So, meaning, the uh, this one will have to be equivalent to 325,000. Okay? So, in that case, class, pwede natin makompleto. No? So, 1,025,000, itong controlling interest equivalent to the proportionate share of 325,000. So, meron tayong 50,000 goodwill. Now, based on this template, that 50,000 will go exclusive to the controlling interest. No? So, that's 50,000. Ngayon, ano bang question? How much should be the measurement of non-controlling interest at the date of acquisition? So the answer is 325,000. Um, pwede ka magkamali na isagot mo is for 300,000 if you simply base it dun sa fair value method kung hindi ka talaga nagkaroon ng test like this. No? So this is very tricky but I hope you uh, understand it so well. No? So unang gagawin, apply yung rule, tignan yung rule. No? So sabi, non-controlling and non-controlling interest can be measured at either fair value or proportionate share. No? So sabi natin, pag fair value, only if it's possible. Kasi nga, si standard, sinasabi, pag daw ito nag-result to negative or kung meron kang gain dyan, ah, hindi pwede. So, non-controlling interest can only get uh, its portion of the goodwill, pero hindi pwede siya pag gain. No? Okay, so that's problem number two. Pag-usapan natin yung problem number three. Again, no, we, we should always do the test. No? So problem number three, assuming uh, HDHC paid 1,350,000, uh, the fair value of that controlling interest is 425,000. No? So yeah, given yung, po, ano, given yung fair value. And that the partial goodwill method was opted. No? Ulitin natin, pag sinabing partial goodwill method, pag partial goodwill method, it's the proportionate share method. No? And if it's the proportionate uh, share method, ang kinukuha natin is ito, yung proportionate to sa fair value. So, anong nangyari dito? Yes, it's uh, while the uh, fair value is given, eh hindi yan ang kailangan natin gamitin. No? 
very ano ulit, tricky no given yung uh, fair value and yet sinabi ng problem that we should use partial goodwill method partial goodwill method is the proportionate share method or the proportionate share in the fair value of the net assets of the subsidiary so therefore it has to be the uh, 325,000 pesos only so kung ano ba 325,000 yan, yung valuation natin, uh, so again, zero yung share ni non-controlling interest from the goodwill. So very tricky kasi binigay ang uh, fair value of the non-controlling interest and yet the problem states to use partial goodwill method. Ulitin ko ha, para at least hindi uh, malilito, proportionate share method ang ginagamit natin is the proportionate share in the fair, fair value of the net assets. So meaning, ito siya. Portion na to. Itong 325,000. Okay? So with that, ready na tayong computing yung requirement. No? So that's 375,000. That's the goodwill arising from business combination. Okay, so, ito, what if the problem is silent? So, paano kung nimbawa hindi niya sinabi na use goodwill, partial goodwill method? So, again, ang kailangan natin gamitin is, if the problem is silent, we use the fair value method. So, paano yun? The problem is silent, we use the fair value method. Itetest ngayon natin. If this 425,000 won't violate the standards, no? So, 425,000 lalagay natin dyan. So, yes, it's correct. It did violate the standards. No? So, the result is good bill. Okay? So, we can proceed. So, that's 425,000. So, the total full good bill would be 475,000. So, yun, ulitin ko yung class, ha? Kasi pansinin mo dito sa requirement number 3, sinabi ng problem to use partial goodwill method. Pag sinabi na na partial goodwill method, hindi mo na kailangan i-analyze pa. Kasi automatic, uh, it will be equal to the fair value of the net assets. No? So that's 325,000. Yung test na ginagawa natin, it's applicable to the fair value method or yung full goodwill method. No? So wag magpapalit na dyan. Pero naman tayong cheat sheet na pwede natin sundan. Okay? Again, if the problem is silent, for example, no, in this case, hindi sinabi na partial goodwill method yung gagamitin, then we use full value, full uh, goodwill method or the fair value method. No? But we have to test whether it's um, it won't violate the, the standards. No? Okay? So let's have requirement number four. Requirement number four, again, same pa rin. No? Assuming HDHSC paid 950,000, okay? Inclusive of 50,000 control premium, how much is the consolidated shareholders' equity on the date of acquisition? O ito, class, the problem is silent as to the method. No? So therefore, we use fair value method only if it's possible. So, paano yan? So, let's test it. No? So, 950,000 includes premium. No? So, essentially, that's 900,000 multiplied by 25%. So, meron lang tayong 300,000. 300,000 compared to 325, ayun, negative. So, dahil negative siya, not allowed by the standards. So, therefore, we revert to uh, the partial or proportionate share method or yung partial goodwill method. No? So, dahil yun yung gagawin natin, let's proceed here. No? So, therefore, it's 325,000. So, meron tayong 25,000 gain. Okay? Ang tinatanong dito sa atin is consolidated shareholders' equity. So, wag magpapalito. So, meron tayong 6 million, 5 million, 500,000. And then, there's the... Uh, 6 million retained earnings but at the same time, that gain will form part of your retained earnings. So that's 25,000. And of course, the non controlling interest equivalent to the uh, uh, fair value of the net assets, yung proportionate share. No? So that's 325,000.
2000. So the total shareholders' equity or consolidated shareholders' equity is 70,850,000 or letter D. Ano yung nakakalito? Marami. Marami nakakalito sa um, business combination via stock acquisition. Ang kailangan lang siguro ma-establish palagi is how to value your non-controlling interest. Ulitin ko to ha. Non-controlling interest can be measured at either fair value or the proportionate share in the fair value of the net assets of the subsidiary. In fact, if the problem is silent, ito agad yung gagamitin natin. Yun nga lang, we have to test it. Kasi, the requirement of the standard is if, it's, if it resulted to gain, eh, hindi pwede siya. It's not allowed. It's, it will violate the provisions of the standard. No? So like, for example, in this case, no? problem is silent. So we use uh, fair value method. We get, we get the fair value of the non-controlling interest. That's 300,000. We plug it here. We compare it to the fair value of net assets. Ayun, the results na negative gain. So sabi, not allowed by the standards. So, kung hindi siya allowed ng standard, we go to the next method, which is the proportionate share method or the partial goodwill method. So, I hope I've reiterated that enough no? uh, throughout the session. No? So, again, my tip to you is to practice it, practice all of this concept by uh, different uh, problems. No? Okay, so actually that ends our discussion for today. So it's a really a lengthy discussion, but uh, thank you for staying with me. So this is the year instructor, Mark Gibson. Thank you for learning with us. See you in our next discussion. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!